people were expected to attend the annual carol concert and after party. Fat Controller wanted this year's party to be an extra special celebration. One evening, he came to the sheds to address the engines on the matter. Now remember that all of your jobs are important, no matter how insignificant some may be, he said. And Ray, you will be in charge of delivering the cards, letters, and parcels. Gordon, you will bring the mayor. Then he paused impressively. And Thomas, you will have the most important job. You are to collect the Christmas tree from Colin's gate. Doc will look after Annie and Clarabelle until you get back. Thomas beamed with pride. Yes, sir, he said excitedly. Will he be able to see Carol's too? We'll see, promised the fat controller. Later that night, the others were sulking, talking about nothing but Thomas's important job. Why should he go? grumbled Henry. He can't do anything a splendid green engine like me couldn't do. Nor me, grunted Gordon. Anyone would think he was special or something. But Thomas didn't care what the other engines thought. He had been picked for the most important job. You're only jealous, he said cheekily. Before they had time to retort, he closed his eyes and fell happily asleep. Next morning, Thomas woke early and left the shed for the workstation. Night, he thought as he puffed along the line. The back controllers were lying on me. Thomas collected the tree safely and began the journey home. The back controller said he had to be back by tea time. But as he descended Gordon's Hill and came into the valley, Operation! he exclaimed. I mustn't be late! Back, Thomas, back! urged his driver and opened up the regulator. But no matter how hard he tried, Thomas couldn't move. Then there was trouble. His exhaust caused a great amount of snow above him to shower all over him. Meanwhile, back at the yard, the other engines were waiting wondering where Thomas could be. Perhaps he's stuck in a tunnel somewhere, suggested Gordon. Henry let off steam indignantly. Huh, he snorted. He's more likely to have been turned onto a branch line, if you ask me. So Gordon and Romney do a cow, suggested Donald. The two big engines glared at him. Silence! Under the fat controller. We know that Thomas collected the tree safely, but Snow has brought the telephone wires down. We must assume that he is stranded somewhere near Edwards Station. The engines all felt sorry at once. Oh, we're not gonna be there, sir. Are we? asked Douglas. Certainly not, said the fat controller. Only two volunteers to go and find him. All the engines hooted at once. They wanted to help rescue Thomas, but Donald and Douglas were chosen for the job, since the plows were already attached. Cold but confident, he set off to the rescue. Good luck! The others whistled as they left. Later, they met Toby, Percy, and Duck. The 
found the controllers cancelled all trains till Thomas is found, said Duck. So take care. Don't come back safely with Thomas on the Christmas tree, encouraged Toby, giving the final ring of his bell for good luck. The twins puffed bravely on, but the snow was getting thicker. They soon arrived in the valley and found a great drift blocking their way. What's that? asked Douglas. I can hear of something. Very faintly, there came a muffled cry. Probably the wind, said Donald. Hey, Nathan, insisted Douglas. Oh, it's Thomas, they cried. Come on, said Douglas. Let's get him out. He must be frozen to his frames in there. When the workmen arrived, it took some time to decide how to dig away the heavy drifts of snow. Thomas' driver and fireman, who took shelter in a nearby cottage, joined the rescue. At long last, they freed Thomas and the Christmas tree from the snow. Thomas was relieved to see the twins. Once his fire was restarted and had steam up, they all set off for home. After delivering the tree safely, they returned to the yard and warmed greetings of the other engines. The fat controller greeted them warmly. As a reward for your hard work, he said, smiling. You may go and enjoy the carols. Be quick now. Yes, sir, said the engines. Yes, said James, letting off steam because he was so excited. The fat controller paused. Kindly remember that this is a special occasion. So be on your best behavior and no, uh, wishing, please. Soon, everyone was in place. One, two, three! Suddenly, like magic, the station was flooded with lights. And there was the Christmas tree, decorated with colored lamps, stars, and ornaments. Ladies, gentlemen, and children, I would like to give three cheers for Thomas the Tankerton and all his friends. And everyone clapped and cheered. The engines were pleased. James was so excited he let out a great wheeze. Everyone laughed, and this time not even the back controller seemed to mind. Suddenly, there was a strange whirring. Oh. Percy and Toby smiled. They knew who it was. The landing light shining brightly held the helicopter touching down gently in the snow. And Malcolm's cop stuck a figure in a red cloak. Everyone cheered. It was Father Christmas. He handed out presents to all the children and thanked the engines for rescuing Thomas. He said, Happy Christmas, Thomas, and to all your friends. Afterwards, Thomas was back in the warmth of the shed again. It's no fun getting stuck in the snow, he said to himself as his friends settled down to sleep. But it was worth it for this party. Happy Christmas, Percy. Happy Christmas, everyone! Children sleeping, snow is soft.
softly falling Dreams are calling Like bells in the distance We to celebrate believe in what you feel inside 